there. In today's competitive market, it's no longer enough to grab eyeballs through attractive packaging. Now, business needs to go further and build interactive experiences. Strategic packaging is one of the ways of enhancing your interaction with customers. Packaging is an important part of a brand's visual identity, which can also provide other sensory cues, such as perception of taste, smell, or touch, and even sound. I'm Catherine Gaho from SBO Research. Thank you for tuning into my channel, Elevators, where we offer elevating and empowering messages to help you grow in life, career, and business. In this video, I will talk about the seven strategic uses of packaging. Do like this video and stay with me as we go through this interesting topic for business. Basically, packaging serves to protect, communicate, promote, and to provide convenience for the consumer. It also serves to reveal something about the product, something about the design and about the quality of the product. As Steve Jobs said, packaging can be theater. It can create a story. And now to the seven strategic uses of packaging. First is strategic differentiation. Packaging is a key facilitator of product differentiation. You can use design, shapes, size, colors, images, and even font type to send a message about a brand's unique selling proposition. Additionally, the package can help express differences in terms of product attributes, uses, and benefits. You can also use it to make a statement about your chosen differentiator. From brand personality, emotional benefits, and expressive benefits, or even country of origin. Many times, people think of packaging as applicable only to tangible products. But because services are intangible to a large extent, they can also benefit from the thinking of strategic packaging as a way to enhance the tangibility or the aspects that are tangible about the services. That is what you can touch. If you think, for example, of a restaurant, it's a service. You go to a restaurant so that you can get the service. But there are many packaging elements that a customer interacts with in such an encounter. You see the furniture, the decor, the menu, the cutlery, the crockery, and so on. If you consider a credit card, the service is intangible, but the credit card itself is tangible. It's a card that you can touch. Its design, its color, texture, and the look can inspire consumers and even carry a lot of meaning. In actual fact, when people produce their credit card, by the mere look of it, many others are able to form certain opinions about that card. Now, the second is storytelling. Packages are used to tell a story, and some are presented as the unique pack of the season. Now, human beings are wired to understand stories, and they are more interested in stories than data. This strategy of storytelling through packaging has become even more valued in these days of social distancing and limited human interaction. Many brands are leveraging on this idea of storytelling to get attention and create interest and even to humanize their brand. There is a trend of story-driven packages, often featuring dramatic characters like the Laughing Cow dairy products, Laughing Cow cheese and all that. Then you have also Kellogg's, Kellogg's cereals, and another one is the Silly Goose Vodka. All these are brands that use storytelling through packaging. There can also be stories on the package that are meant to tell the history of the product, or its origins, or about the people who produce it, or the source of raw materials and the like. And others demonstrate the sustainability practices through the value chain of that product. We have also seen stories on packages that reflect on um, the process by which the product is made. An interesting one is how Kenyan women use lessos in events or clothing in packaging of gifts for especially weddings and events like that. And these lessos are selected 
because of the expressive messages that they carry. And this is particularly common among the women in the coast. We see these lessons have messages coming from Swahili proverbs to a large extent. And the words speak volumes from the way they wrap these gifts that they give to the bride during weddings and such events. The third is product bundling. Product bundling strategy is appealing to consumers and also is good for business because it enables the business to sell more in a single interaction. It involves combining two standalone products and offering the consumer a deal, you know, if they pick the bundle. If you look at uh, cases like KFC, they always offer bundles, like they have several pieces of chicken, then fries, and a soda or a soft drink. This is a strategy that enables people to then have the choice to select the bundled options. In fact, there are no images that they show that are not bundled. In other shops, you find that they will bundle detergent powder with fabric softener or pencil with rubber and sharpener, things that make sense together. Now, an interesting example of bundling is what we see in the political economy here in Kenya. You know, the political market is very good at bundling. The way we see sometimes during political campaigns that political candidates come together as a team and then they run a joint campaign for governor, deputy governor, senator and member of parliament and even woman rep. And then they tell us to vote six-piece suit. You know, basically meaning that we vote the entire team. During the last election, many politicians used this strategy and were appealing to their supporters to vote them all as a package. And that is how we ended up with some strange characters leading important dockets because while this bundling was good for the candidates, among the six pieces, some of them were not the very best. We have also seen this concept of bundling being used in the political economy, particularly in Kenya today, in the BBI campaigns. The BBI proponents are people who come from different parties. They come from different leadership of different political parties, different institutions that are not even uh, necessarily political, and they have battled together to create teams through which they have been able to push through the agenda of the BBI to this point. Of course, with the very strong message that no one can stop Legge until, of course, the other day when the judiciary decided to intervene and suggest that it's possible to stop reggae. We are yet to see whether really the reggae was stopped. When you think about bundling, the one important thing is to put together bundles that are complementary. Whether you are dealing with products or you are dealing with political candidates or issues or the people you package together need to complement each other and deliver the value that comes to the customer or the voter in the case of political economy. In the music and video games industry, a bado may be referred to as a package deal. An entertainment bado may include a mix of music with ringtones, videos, and other combinations and variations. And that is more likely to appeal to the customers than if you are selling one piece at a time. Even the whole tradition of coming up with a music album is actually about battling a mix of music so that different people can actually buy the whole album because of one song or two songs. This battling strategy is valued in marketing because it drives more sales and is highly profitable. It helps to get more from a single sale, generating higher profits. It also helps reduce distribution and marketing costs. Now, the fourth point is personalization. There is a growing trend of personalized packaging. This involves tailored packages based on information that the business has about customers' needs, values, and attitudes. At a time when becoming interactive is highly valued, personalization is a major tactic to enhance connection with consumers and to build an emotional connection. The idea is to get closer to the consumer. I remember Coca-Cola's Share a Coke campaign, which took personalized packages to another level by using people's names on Coke bottles. 
Another example is Kellogg's, which runs promotions to get customers to upload photos and personalized messages for their family or back to school cereal packaging. Some companies also send personalized thank you cards addressed to the customer by name when delivering products. Now to increase engagement, you can tap into consumers' own creative ideas to help make the personalized package. Now the fifth point is innovation. Packaging represents an opportunity for innovation by marketers. It can be used to innovate around many aspects of consumer behavior. Examples include the single server packs for the bottom of the pyramid market and the out of home usage market segments. Another opportunity lies in expanding the offering to new market segments and occasions of use. Other options are new channel innovations. Perfumes and fragrance marketers design packages that leave small spaces for customers to smell the fragrance before committing to buy. Some manufacturers also create packages that are more expensive than the product they contain. Like the designer perfumes, vintage drink brands, the package itself is more expensive than the cost of making the drink or the perfume that is contained in that package. Many people keep such packages for a long time after the product is finished. Another marketing role of a reminder, promotion and the like. And to sum it up, the strategic uses of packaging are strategic differentiation, storytelling, bundling, and we've seen you can also bundle political teams, personalization, and innovation. No. Thank you for staying with me. Do like this video and share it with at least two people who you think will benefit from it. If you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss on anything that we post on Mondays and Thursdays. On Monday, we post a motivational topic. We call it Monday Motivation. And on Thursday, we upload a video for business, consumer behavior, marketing topics. Thank you and best wishes. We all need to elevate our mindsets at this time.